offers a wonderful line of hammer hand pieces. We have the 15D that has your duplex spring, the 15, as well as a hammer hand piece for your micro motor. Now, each of these hand pieces are going to use the same anvil points. Now, here's the thing that a lot of people don't realize, that the anvil points, when you buy those, they're kind of raw. They're just a blank slate and they are ready for you to alter them. Let me take a couple of minutes here and I'm just going to show you very quickly how I alter my anvil points for use in stone setting and texturing. Anvil points can be purchased either individually or as a set like this. As you can see, I've got two different sets, one that I regularly use and one that is completely blank and raw and new. Like I said, these are kind of a blank slate. So in my set, there are four that I currently use all of the time. So in this case, I have taken this square blank and I have altered it so that it's no longer square, but I've ground it down and polished it so that it is more rectangular and it also has kind of a curved end there at the top and this is something that I use for when I'm doing like a thick wall bezel. The next one that I've altered I've done very very little to it. This is a pave point and what I've done with this one is basically just polish the end of it. It already has kind of a smooth rounded surface on there and so it just needed to have just that little bit of polish on there. Now as you use this, in my case as I have used it, it has kind of flattened this out a little bit so every now and then I will just put this uh, to some sandpaper, maybe a file and just kind of round that back out again depends on how you really want to use this. More often than not, I don't use this for pave points, but I do use this one quite a bit for creating a very small or fine hammer texture. Now this one I use almost just as it is. I don't really alter this one. However, again, as I use it, it starts to kind of maybe flare out a little bit on the ends and just needs a, a bit of touch up from time to time. And this one is a stippling point. And again, I use this one mainly for textures on my pieces and to get into some tight areas. And finally, last but not least, is the one that I use probably the most often. And I use this as, you know, it looks kind of like a bezel rocker, and that's exactly what I use this as, is a bezel setting tool. Now this one has kind of a rounded profile, but it is flat along that outer surface. So this one I've done probably the most altering on this. And what I've done is made it so that I have a curved arc that goes all the way up and over. And then I've also rounded out the edges on each of the sides here and then taken this to a nicer polish. Now I don't necessarily want this to be like a super high polish, although you can. Uh, some people will take this maybe to about a 400 grit. What I would do regardless of where I end with this, I would take this to a very fine polish and then bring it back just a little bit to give it a little bit of tooth, but you don't want this sliding off of your bezel and onto your stones. So let's see what I do to alter this particular anvil point. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round off any of these sharp edges that might be here. So I'm going to just use this in my bench pin and I'm going to use my file. Now this file is one that's kind of a a multi-purpose file in my studio. I don't use this on gold or silver. So you want to make sure that you're not using a file that can contaminate your other precious metals. So I'm going to just kind of take this and notice that as I come across, I'm taking this kind of at a 45 degree angle. I'm rocking it up this way as I come around this way. And that is going to help give me that radius edge that is so necessary on this piece. I'm also going to do that same thing here along the outer edges and just kind of blend everything in nice and smooth. I don't want to have any points or corners or edges. Now once I have these corners kind of rounded, I'm then going to start to round the top of my piece. And this one's gonna take a little bit longer here just because we are going to have to bring that and pull it down and to create that arc up there. It 
And I'm going to continue to do this until I'm happy with the arc that I get up here. And I can also use this black oxide that is on here as an indicator to tell me if I've actually cleared that area or not, because that black oxide is going to stay there until you file it away. Alright, once you are happy with the shape that you have created and the arc, it doesn't have to be much of an arc. Matter of fact, some people will probably leave theirs a little more flat than I like mine. But once you have that, then we're going to work into a sanding stick and just kind of smooth out any of those file marks that might have been left over from the file. So I'm going to use that same motion that I used with the file just to kind of blend and smooth everything together. Once I'm happy with that, I will move to a finer grit. In this case, I have a 30 micron polishing paper that I'm going to finish this off with. And I want to keep going until I remove all the marks from the previous step. Once you're happy with that, you could be done here at this stage, or you could take this to either your polishing arbor, or yes. I would probably use a dedicated cotton buff either in a micro motor, a flex shaft, or whatever we might have, and just kind of hit that with a little higher polish, and then you're good to go. When I use this ball end, I'm going to start just by knocking off this oxide that's on here. So this one is not going to take very much at all. And again, this is just a, a 30 micron uh, sanding or polishing paper. And all I'm doing, because I really like the shape of this, so really all that I'm doing is just removing that oxide. And this one is now ready to go. Now in the case of this square, you can see I actually did a lot of altering on this. So in this case, I ground away quite a bit of the outer portion of this to make that so that it comes into a more thin or tapered rectangle. Okay, and I would again just follow the same process that I've done for the other two until I get it to the shape that I like. And again, the final steps, I'm just going to take um, either my polishing paper or my, my polishing machine, whatever, just to get that so I have a nice soft finish. So as you can see, it's quite easy to do. Now I know that several of you guys are going to be asking where can we find those polishing papers. So at first I used kind of this adjustable sand, sanding stick holder. I love this because I use these sanding papers from Zona. Both of them are from Zona. And the thing that's nice about these is that you just cut a strip and they're perfectly sized. You fold it in half and just tighten it onto here. So those are really good and they can use, you can use this with any of your sandpapers at all and they have two different sizes of these sanding sticks. So make sure you check those out. I'll include links down below as well. I hope that helps answer the questions that I've received on how to alter these anvil points. Again, find a, a file that's not going to contaminate your other metals. I just file away. It will probably take a little bit of time because you are shaping some metal. Have a good day guys and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.